Hey gang, Dr. Mitch Early Wine here. Just wanted to do this introduction to the class APSY 389, Addictive and Compulsive Behaviors, or the drug class as it is known. The in-person class is far and away my favorite. I'm sorry I'm not getting to look at you guys and interact. I realize uh, some things that are fun in person seem hostile or weird online, so uh, cut me a little slack if you would. I'd be super grateful. Really, this a little section is all about deciding, is this really the class for you? And I want to get some uh, tips and tricks across as well. So we're going to talk about the drill, really a, a notion about uh, matching arousal to tasks, which is uh, part of the Yerkes Dodson Law. And then, you know, just determining if the information is what you expected, then everybody's going to get an opportunity to leave. Uh, really just, it's okay to drop this class. It is not a uh, requirement for graduation in any way. It doesn't fulfill uh, essential requirements in any novel way that you can't get somewhere else. And it just may not be what you thought it was. And I just don't want you to be disappointed. Well, let's get into it. So first and foremost, uh, the drill was basically me sort of yelling at the beginning of class, as you may have heard, and then having uh, everybody in the class yell together so we can all make sure our arousal is up just enough, but not too much, because this is consistent with the Yerkes Dodson Law. And the Yerkes Dodson Law will definitely be on the test, and it'll just uh, say, what is the optimum level of arousal for the task? So some tasks you can imagine require considerable arousal if you're about to have a, a giant competitive sporting event or something like that, you really want your arousal high. Uh, in contrast, if you want to, um, you know, perform a bris in the backseat of a car, you need to have your arousal relatively low. And it's got to match up. Well, for lectures and things like that, you don't want to be flying off uh, the handle like you've just done a half a gram of Coke running around but you also don't want to be falling asleep. And so do whatever it takes to make sure you can get your arousal appropriately. If it means standing up and uh, running around for a few steps or dancing around your house a minute, by all means, take that time. And that's one of the luxuries of having a course online. And yeah, what I'll say on the test is basically, what is the Erkies Dodson Law? And then I'll write a bunch of things and one of them will be there is an optimal level of arousal for every task. Or maybe I'll sw switch it around and I'll have this and then have a bunch of bogus sounding laws and they'll pick this one. Okay, shouldn't be hard. This class isn't therapy. I just want to emphasize, hey, if you've got a drug problem, join the club. Lots and lots of folks struggle with this or have other issues for uh, things that often get uh, prescribed psychiatric meds or something like that. I'd be delighted to offer you a referral. We've got the Psychological Services Center, the Counseling Center on campus is just splendid, really talented folks. Uh, nobody got sober because of this, well, nobody got sober in this class because of the content of the class. I do have a couple of stories of folks who um, quit using hard drugs, somebody who quit using alcohol, somebody We've had about four people quit smoking cigarettes over the years, um, you know, in part because we're talking about this so much, but you're not going to have a therapeutic experience guaranteed and certainly not an efficient one just because you're learning this kind of information. And in fact, this information is also not uh, a prevention against drug problems necessarily either. This class doesn't suck. I mean, as you can imagine, in some big formal setting, when I put this up, people do get a kick out of it. It's not so great online. So if these topics don't appeal to you, so you're going to look down the book and you're going to see there's stuff about drug prevention. We've got a whole section in the syllabus on substance use problems. It's really a, about how we diagnose, assess, treat problems from that little book I wrote called Substance Use Problems. We've got a whole section just on cannabis. The last fifth of the class or more is really all marijuana and in parts because you can use marijuana to help understand drug policy, drug research, and things like that. But if you picked up a book that has a big five-leafer on the front and said, whatever for, you know, that's just, this isn't the class for you, okay? In contrast, if these look good to you, please, please do. Now, are you lazy? I'm sure you guys aren't lazy or you wouldn't be in college. But maybe there's a dispositional uh, combination with this. Maybe now is just not a time when you have a lot of energy. Uh, dumb is not what I mean either. I know you guys are smart. You've made it in here. 
Uh, but the bottom line is maybe you don't have the intellectual firepower focused right now, right? So maybe you're not ready to master this yet, but another semester down the line. Now, busy, I know you guys are busy, so please, please, if you've got, you know, 17 credits and a 20 hour a week job and you're taking care of uh, your aging parents or something like that, like now is just not the time. I'm not gonna freak out on anybody who drops and you know, if I see you around town, I'll be glad to see you. Um, bottom line is it's the responsible thing to do sometimes to decline some offers. And this has a lot to do with the fundamental attribution error. Normally, I'd ask here, hey, who remembers the fundamental attribution error? And somebody who had social psych relatively recently will uh, do their best to explain, we've got some problems in the way we think about situations and personality. So when I was director of clinical training, for example, if somebody came to the meeting late, I'd think, wow, that person's really a jerk, right? When I went to a meeting late, hey, I had to pee right? We're very good at making the situational attribution when it's our own behavior, but when somebody else does something, we often assume it's some kind of personality trait or characteristic, and I want to make sure we keep that in mind when we're talking about folks who use drugs, particularly if they use drugs problematically. Odds are high it is the product of some situational contributors. Now, yes, some aspects of the way we react to drugs are heritable, but that doesn't mean there's an addictive personality or you're born to be uh, an alcoholic necessarily. Let's, let's be gentle with our friends who have struggles that are different from ours and remember that nobody, even identical twins, don't necessarily live in the exact same predicaments. So yeah, a little more on the fundamental attribution error. It's just that we tend to attribute the behaviors of others to enduring dis dispositions, right? If your friend doesn't get any work done, you assume it's because he's lazy. If you don't get any work done in a week, it's often because you were busy, right? Let's just extend that to the folks around us. Now, I got to admit, I've had clients who don't extend it to themselves even. Let's uh, make sure we all give ourselves a little bit of self-compassion on these situations. So if I had a gun to my head and somebody said, all right, how many hours a week is this class really? Truth be told, if you can do 12 hours per week in here, you're bound to rock it. It's not that this material is very difficult. We're not balancing ionic equations or anything. It's just that it's voluminous. There's a great deal to memorize and you really have to not only spend time learning it the first time, you really have to hammer it home, make your own study guides, flashcards, whatever works for you. And we also need to space the practice out. Now, what do I mean by spaced practice? A spaced practice means you've got multiple consistent repeating learning episodes, right? So you're going to have regular attention on the relevant material, preferably not only recognizing it, but also recalling it, generating it yourself multiple days per week. In contrast to mass practice, which is fewer inconsistent learning episodes. So here's a quaint example. You can imagine somebody who in space practice studies three hours each night, Monday through Thursday, and that person's bound to get good learning and good retention, as opposed to mass practice where somebody puts it all off till Thursday night and studies 12 hours. That's just not going to work anywhere near the same way. So please schedule regular time with the book and the lectures, and you'll be glitched. So just a couple of key points. If you're bad at multiple choice, I really will try to make it as clear as possible. I only have A, B, and C. I don't do the A, not B, or A and B, or all of the above, or any of that stuff. That just generates anxiety. It's not a good way to test learning. And so I will help you as best as I can Generally, what happens is there's a subset of folks who can talk themselves into any answer at all. And if you're that person, I tip my hat to you and I may have something in common with you because it all seems connected sometimes. Nevertheless, what I would recommend is put your hand over the options, like read the question and just come up with an answer yourself rather than getting uh, distracted by the different options. 
And then look, if the thing you came up with is there, just pick it and, and go on. And odds are high, that's really right. If you start talking yourself into an answer, that's probably not what I meant, right? If you've got to say, well, this, but on sometimes, no, no on sometimes, okay? The right answer on my tests should be straightforward and easy. All right, if you're taking more than 15 credits, I really don't think this is the class for you. Just, just saying. If you're working more than 20 hours per week, and I realize, you know, not everybody has the luxury. I had to work 20 hours a week in college many a year, but maybe this isn't the class right now, and we can always set you up for a, another semester when you don't have quite the same hours. If you tend to do things at the last minute, this is really going to be a drag because the way the tests are lined up, particularly online, You've got to stay ahead of the material, and you've got to get everything done on time. If you have a t habit of taking incompletes, I really would prefer you just drop now, okay? Everybody has a rough semester once in a while. Uh, I had to take an incomplete in grad school one time. Like, it just it happens. But if you do two of these every semester, you're going to hate this. And I can elaborate if you really have a big question about it. Now, if you need a lot of extra credit, I was debating on this. I will give folks five points on the final exam for five hours of research participation, but I assure you that's only five points, and when you saw in the syllabus, that's not a ton. I don't, uh, literally, it's university policy. You can't, like, do some work at the end to try to increase your grade, and I don't think it's really going to be necessary. I really think if you make good sense of this, you'll be glad you did. Now, let's be honest. I wrote a 325-page book about marijuana. I don't want to read your five-page treatise on marijuana for two extra points. Like, just, it's not a good use of either of us. The time is limited. I find I do best my veterans, and hey, man, I tip my hat to you. These guys know this is your job, right? And so what do you do in order to treat this like your job? Well, you're going to do your work before we meet. You're going to arrive every day on time online. Obviously, that's going to be up to you, but definitely keep the structure. Read first, all right? So other than the chapters on the nervous system um, and drug action, which I don't think you should read first, definitely read the chapter first. And then when you are listening to the lecture, you'll say, oh, wait, I know I read that somewhere. And then you know if I'm saying it and it's in the book, it's definitely on the test. All right? Um, so read before class, arrive every day on time. Truth be told, just read before the lecture and you'll be glad you did. Make sure you take good notes, as I discussed in that very first presentation. Oh, so the first rule of drug class is do not talk about drug class. Uh, obviously, some of this goes back to the 90s. If any of you have seen Fight Club, that's a nice weekend movie movie, but uh, really just if you put the time in, you're going to be fine. If you do have friends who wanted to get in and I couldn't get them in, I'm really sorry. I will teach it again next semester. So a couple of questions that always seem to come up. Yes, you can drop one midterm, but you cannot drop the final exam. All right, I realize I'm the guy who wrote the book on cannabis and you have to take the test on cannabis. A little suspicious, but truth be told, it's about making sure people stay engaged, and also that material is central not only to understanding of cannabis, but the way drugs work, the way drug policy works, and the way we do that kind of research. The final is not cumulative. I realize that sounds really weird, and maybe you won't get to hammer some things home as much, but I noticed the anxiety really dropped when I made this change, and I can go into more detail on the cannabis material and the research that's done about it. I think everybody seems to like it in the long run, including me. Now, if you do want some extra credit, what I would recommend more than doing the research participation is read the book. I don't know what the deal is. Some folks think the book is optional or something like that. Maybe some of your other classes, you buy three books and only read one of them. I don't understand that at all. I wouldn't make you spend the money. That is nuts. Nevertheless, if you read the book, you're going to be glad you did. And if you write yourself questions out in the margins or even somewhere else, if you do the cahoots, I'm making crossword puzzles this time, you're going to get the chance to generate that material on your own. You're going to do a ton better. So what do you do for extra credit? And now everybody would yell out, read the book. All right. The book is not a novel. I got to be candid. Okay, it's not, hey, I wonder if the butler did it, right? Everything in there is important. And it doesn't read easy because 
It's not a story all the time. A lot of times it's information. You're going to see headings and subheadings. By the time you go from one heading to a subheading or from one subheading to another subheading, there's something in there that is a question. Write that question out in the margin. You'll be glad you did. It's not like just reading a story, but it's a good way to get information across. All right, so everything is going to be not on eRes, but on Blackboard now. The slides that we're watching right here, uh, if you need an extra syllabus, it's on there, right? There's going to be a time for questions at the beginning of every class. Well, those were the dates, huh? Feel free to write something on YouTube or email me, as I mentioned. And let's get into that just a minute. So if you are going to email me, please pick some kind of professional address or just use your Albany email address. I'm eager to make sure you please, please read the syllabus first before you just dash off questions to me or to the TA. Odds are high, whatever you've asked is in the syllabus. I'm going to have a question from the syllabus. The syllabus I put together over the years and it's really worth your time. It's not that voluminous. Questions like, I wasn't there yesterday, did I miss anything? That's really heartbreaking, okay? No, we all fanned our ass and ate bonbons, right? Give, give me some support here. I'm going to have everything online. Definitely this won't be the same issue because you won't uh, miss the opportunity to see it. What's on the test is always on the syllabus, all right? Whatever we covered since the last test, that's the deal. And questions that are like, what's up with this stimulant thing? <laughs> All right, so if you can be specific as possible, obviously I can give you a more efficient answer. We can have a Zoom chat if it's a more involved thing. We'll make it work. But again, please, please try to organize your thoughts before you send a question. All right, and then the whole schedule, this is a weird semester sometimes. Who knows when, which break is, all that. Just give it your best. But any kind of item about the calendar is also there. All right, if you are gonna interact with me or any other instructor, it's best to, you know, behave responsibly. Make an assertive request, have a question, but let's get right to it. You don't need to begin with things that are either accusatory or confirming your expertise or any of that. Um, the don't curse so much, let's see how I do. I, uh, I love you guys, I won't curse at you, I don't call people names, I just sometimes get frustrated, and it's not a sign of poor vocabulary, I actually have data on that, but we'll, we'll get into it. Couple other issues, look, if your grandparents are alive, call them up, if you love them, tell them you love them, if you don't, see if you can clear it, because they are going to die, right? And back in the day, I made that joke at the beginning of the lecture, and sure enough, guess whose grandma died, right? right. If you've got a rough semester ahead, Right? If you're allergic to mornings and stuff, this isn't going to be as big an issue now. And this is the delight of being online. Now, if this class just isn't a priority to you, hey, that's your prerogative. Right? If you're not in it to get an A, I'm not going to you know, get you in touch with some magic motivation you don't have. But odds are high you might want to take something else. Why not take classes that you're really excited about? Finally, uh, Rosenthal has some data basically showing nine-second clips of professors without any language at all. And people can predict their teacher readings at the end of the semester. Now, I admit teacher readings are pretty much a measure of how white, male, and young you are. But uh, you've probably decided already from this if you're going to like this or not. So this is the opportunity to leave. I won't be hurt. You don't have to worry about it. And then everybody who stays on is really here to play. I really appreciate you going along for the ride if you want. If you don't, that's absolutely cool. All right, take care. Good time for a break, and then let's watch that next video.